Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and a chef on a mission. Today's mission is baking soda. Uh, here's a great article from the alternativedaily.com. I will link that in below. Now, this is going to take some time to get through. Not too much time. I mean, you can look at the video right now and see this is 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is. You know, and it drives me crazy when people say, they leave comments like, oh, Marcus, you take so long to, to talk about this. You know what? This stuff's important that I talk about. If you don't care about your health, you don't care about the environment, you know, then don't spend 10 or 15 minutes to learn something that's going to improve uh, one or both of those. So, uh, you know, that's my feeling on that. If you don't have 10 minutes, you know what? You know what? Listen to it while you're, while you're brushing your teeth, while you're doing something. You don't have to sit there and hold the phone or the YouTube and just watch the whole thing and focus on that. Do it. I sit and listen to books while I do other things. I, I listen to YouTube videos. I, first thing I do when I go in the morning in my, in my uh, kitchen, I start making fresh lemon juice. I make a smoothie. I make pineapple juice. And I throw on the computer and right there in the background. I'm listening to who I want to get inspired that day from YouTube. It might be a 15-minute video, it might be a 15-minute video, it might be a 5-minute video. But I would never say, this guy is taking too long and it's a waste of my time because that's what that's what, and that, that's what energizes me right there. So, hopefully, um, the right people are watching this. And if you don't, don't want to, you know, if you're going to make one of those comments, then don't watch it because you don't care about, about any of this. So, 9 uses, let's jump right in. 9 uses of baking soda that may surprise you. Did you know... Uh, let's see, where do we start? Okay, here it is. Sorry, my page froze. Did you know that you go to a battle each day against thousands of environmental pollutants that lurk not only in our air, our water, and our soil, but also in every, in the very products that we trust and keep in our homes and bodies clean, moisturized, and fresh? The Environmental Working Group. Uh, the EWG estimates that 25% of women use more than 15 products each day that contain over 126 different ingredients, with as many as one in five being carcinogenic. As of today, our government does not require, listen very carefully to this, as of today, our government does not require health studies or any pre-market testing of the chemicals and personal care products even though we are eating them on a daily, quote unquote, eating them on a daily basis. According to the Office of Cosmetics and Colors, the FDA, a cosmetic manufacturer can use almost any raw material in the making of a product without approval. That's right, they can put whatever they want in there and basically not have to go through any approval process. In an investigation of ingredients in 23,000 products, the EWG found that nearly one in every 30 products that was sold in the United States failed to meet one or more of the industry or governmental standards set by other countries. That means other countries have these standards. And other countries are saying, no, you can't put this in, in lipstick and in shampoo and lotion and suntan lotion. Get, get rid of this crap. You can't put this in. But here in America, forget about it. You know, all, I got to tell you, as a young chef, I was I was I was able to to I was able to befriend somebody who owned a processing plant, a beef processing plant. So as a young chef, curious in in how and how all my food was being produced, especially the processing point, I was able to go into behind the scenes of this process of this processing plant, a beef a beef house, a beef processing plant, and you know. There was one section of the plant that smelled so bad. It was horrific. It was all the innards of the animals. It was it was putrid. It was disgusting. And a truck would pull up to that part, and they would just load this truck up with all these raw ingredients. And I said to him, I said, where's all this stuff going? And he goes, he goes, there's a market for everything, Marcus. He goes, everything in this plant gets put to use. Not one thing gets wasted. They will haul it off. They will pay me. They will do something. Not much goes down the drain in this processing plant. It goes into things you would never even think of, like lipstick, hair care, all these, all these things, makeup. He goes, Marcus, the makeup industry, the cosmetic industry is loaded with the stuff that's going to that truck right there, right now. And you're like, why would somebody put this on their body? Why would the government allow this? Because the government, the government knows that this is all cheap products. And since the government is influenced heavily by these companies and these industries because of lobbyists, it, it, it makes sense that they got to protect their profits. So it goes hand in hand, you know? That's the bottom line. 
In fact, there are over 400 products sold in our country that contain dangerous chemicals that other countries do not allow. They also found 400 other products containing ingredients that the industry itself has deemed unsafe when used as directed on the label. So that means, hey, this ingredient, if you use it as directed on the label, it is totally unsafe, but we're still gonna allow it in, into, in, into onto your hair, into your lips, into your lotion, to your body and everything. Now, earlier in the article, it was a quote unquote, when we were eating these, we're not really eating them, but when you put them on your body, your body's absorbing these. So you're consuming these, not through your mouth, but unless you're doing mouthwash or toothpaste, obviously that's in your mouth, but through your skin. Your body's absorbing it. You can just because it's going in your skin doesn't skin doesn't mean you're not consuming it. You are consuming it. That 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 is the facts right there. So, household cleaners dangerous as well. Just not cosmetics. According to the National Research Council, less than 20% of chemicals in everyday use have been tested for acute effects and less than 10% have been tested for chronic, reproductive or mutagenic effects. The Toxic Substances Control Act was passed by Congress about 30 years ago. Oh, wow. What's this act about? However, the testing of chemical compounds is very limited. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has only tested about 200 of the 80,000 chemicals that are found in home products, including cleaners. That's it, folks. 200 out of 80,000. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health reports that about one third of the substances used by fragrance industries are more are uh, industry are toxic. Moreover, fragrance manufacturers do not have do not have to list the ingredients that they use. They don't have to list them on the labels. No ingredients. Don't have to list it as they are considered trade secrets. Very sneaky. How'd that get lobbied? <laughs> For this reason, be suspect of anything labeled fragrance. According to the American Lung Association, household cleaner agents that contain potentially harmful substances that contribute to indoor air pollution are wide reaching and diverse. They're also explained that the household cleaners can cause nausea, dizziness, aller uh, allergic reactions, eye and skin irritation, and respiratory problems and have, been linked, and have been linked to some cancers. A number of studies, including research published by the Washington Toxic Coalition, states that many conventional cleaning products may irritate the lungs, burn the eyes and skin, worsen asthma symptoms, and even cause death. Statistics compiled by the American Association of Poison Control Centers have found that 1.25 million children under age six are unintentionally poisoned every year by common household products. Now, everybody, I had asthma for years. Huh. I had asthma until I was 28 years old. Not once did I ever, when I went to my doctor to get a prescription for my spray or get a new medication or get my nebulizer, not once did they ever say, how about the chemicals that are, you're using? What, what kind of deodorant? What kind of this? What are, you, what are you using? What are you putting? Not once was this ever a topic ever, people. And it probably is not with your doctor if you're having some of these. This is a serious thing. This is a very serious thing. And they'd just rather prescribe a drug to you to say, stop the itching, breathe fresh. You know what? At 28 years old, I discovered that I was in control of my life. I was in control of my health and I didn't have to go to my doctor for all these prescriptions anymore. And I knocked out five medications at 28 years old, lost weight, cured my asthma, reversed my asthma. I don't think I can legally say cured, but I reversed my asthma and dropped my cholesterol, got rid of my high blood pressure. I, I, amazing what I did at 28 years old because I took control of my health. And this is the thing about health people. It's not one thing you're doing. It's not just one thing. It's looking at the whole picture. It's everything around you. It's your environment. It's everything, people. You know, if you're gonna eat right, why don't you buy um, the best deodorant you can, the cleanest deodorant, the best toothpaste you can, the best toothbrush you can, the best shampoo that you can? Why not, instead of using all these lotions, use just straight up organic raw coconut oil? That's what I put in my hair. Coconut oil, that's it. Straight up coconut oil. There's no gels, there's nothing like that. I don't care if the package says organic or not. It's not going in my hair, it's coconut. Coconut oil goes in my skin. That's what my whole family uses. Um, carpet and uh, carpet oven and other cleaners may contain tulene, chloride, formaldehyde, methylene, ethylene, glycol, formaldehyde, nitrobenzene, and other volatile uh, organic compounds found in these cleaners have been linked to asthma in children. Furthermore, a number of household cleaner products have been linked to, uh, linked by some studies in leukemia in children. Of course, this is amazing. So here we go. Here's the point of this whole article, people. Baking soda to the rescue. 
Yes, Arm & Hammer baking soda, Bob's Red Mill baking soda, baking soda to the rescue. Not only can baking soda replace many harsh household products, but it can also uh, deserve some space in your cosmetic bag. Using baking soda in place of dangerous chemical products is a great way not only to stay toxin free, but also help reduce environmental toxins. I've always said healthy body, healthy planet. There's a massive correlation between how things are processed and then put back onto the earth. If it's toxic for the earth people, it's toxic for us. If we're honoring our body and we're putting in something super clean, it's most likely gonna honor the environment. There's a direct correlation between that. Many of you have been using baking soda around your home for years without ever knowing what it is. What did a little digging uncover? Well, we did a little undigging to uncover the mystery. Turns out that sodium bicarbonate is a chemical salt that in its natural form is a mineral na nicolite, nicolite, I think that's how you pronounce it, N-A-H-C-O-L-I-T. Baking soda can react as both an acid and a base, although it is a solution that is a bit on the alkaline side, okay? Uh, it's found in abundance in the Green River Basin which cuts through several states in the central part of our country. A number of commercial companies mine this directly from the ground as and sell it as a raw product, which others heat and treat with chemicals and then sell it. So this is a, nat they're mining baking soda here, people. They're mining this, it's natural. Um, your body also produces it as well. Uh, either way, both methods uh, produce an environmentally friendly product. The only caution we have for consumers is to stick to aluminum-free brand of baking soda when possible. Now, I've done research on this, people. I believe that I think most brands are just aluminum-free. I think that's the, what the industry is. I think people confuse baking powder, which you bake with. You can bake, bake baking soda too with baking powder, which is common in kitchens. You need to buy the aluminum-free one there. But as far as what I can see is you're going to look for aluminum-free, um, but I believe they are all aluminum-free anyway. Sodium bicarbonate helps regulate pH. It keeps substances from being too acidic or too alkaline. Its ability to neutralize the pH of any substance it comes in contact with, contact with makes it highly effective for many things. Baking can also help keep pH balance steady in your body, a process known as buffering. It is both the neutralizing and buffering capabilities of baking soda that allow it to work so well on acidic odors like those found in your refrigerator and also keep your pH neutral like it does in the laundry water to boost the power of detergent. Here are nine ways you can put baking soda to work for you every single day. Exfoliate, number one. Baking soda mixed with a little warm water is an excellent exfoli exfoliator for the face and other parts of the body. Baking soda will smooth the skin, remove dead skin cells, and leave your skin feeling fresh and vibrant. You can even put a dab, uh, a little paste on acne spots. It'll help draw out the toxins and reduce the redness. Number two, relieve gout. Gout is a very painful and uncomfortable condition that is caused by uric acid and is that is overproduced by the body until it builds up to very high levels and settles in the joints. This causes painful swelling and inflammation. Mix two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice with a tablespoon, teaspoon of fresh, of fresh, of baking soda and drink it up. The baking soda will alkalize the urine and neutralize the uric acid. Number three, to wash fruits and veggies. Baking soda is a safe way to remove dirt and residue from fresh fruit and vegetables. Sprinkle it a little on your clean sponge and scrub and rinse as well. Let's see, one, two, three. Number four, rid hair of buildup. You can use a lo you can use a lot of product in your hair, and if you want a true squeaky clean feel, try baking soda. Combine one tablespoon of baking soda with one cup of warm water and apply to damp hair. Comb through and rinse well. Number five, clean coffee pots and teapots, and also copper. We clean copper pans with uh, with baking soda. Um, baking soda, vinegar, maybe some salt in there to scrub it. Uh, maybe we'll do another video on that sometime. We'll actually do a demo on how well it works. Clean coffee and teapots. Remove teapots and coffee stains and re 
reduce bitter taste left in mugs, use a solution of a quarter cup of baking soda and one quart of warm water. Some stubborn stains may require overnight soaking in the solution or some scrubbing with a soft sponge. Either way, you are left with a sparkling clean coffee pot and coffee mugs, tea mugs. Number six, clean floors. To remove dirt and grime without scratching, uh, no wax and tile floors, mix a half a cup of baking soda in a bucket with warm water and scrub. Rinse clean, uh, rinse clean after scrubbing to remove scuff marks. Put a little baking soda on a damp sponge and scrub lightly and rinse. I got to tell you, when new staff and new dishwashers come in my kitchen, I say, man, this is what you use to clean stuff. And they'll, like, baking soda. What do you mean baking soda? And they'll make a paste of it and just put it on a wall that has grease or a, the hood or something. And they're like, holy cow, Marcus, this stuff is, like, amazing. I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. And it's not going to create a toxic reaction to your skin and stuff. And they're just totally amazed. Because sometimes you have dishwashers that come in that have been, like, work doing dishes for, like, five, ten years. And they're used to spraying these harsh chemicals in kitchens. And I'm like, no, you don't need all those harsh chemicals. Baking soda to the rescue. And wholesale, you buy a big container of it it's dirt cheap compared to oven cleaners that are like 30 bucks a case 30 bucks a gallon it's it's insane people this is insane stuff what baking soda is really really good for um deodorized drains nothing neutralizes odors better than baking soda to keep your tub and sink drain smelling fresh pour a half a cup of baking soda down the drain while running some warm tap water down the drain you can also pour some right down your garbage disposal and run some warm water while running your disposal add a little baking soda to your dishwashing detergent to help fight stubborn stains and bacteria number eight ease itching and swelling Skip the commercial creams and lotions. Try baking soda for your itchy or irritated skin. You can ease uncomfortable itchiness and, itchiness and swelling from poison ivy or poison oak, as well as bug bites with a little baking soda. Make a paste with a little baking soda and water and apply, apply to the irritated area. This will work for the bee stings and chicken pox as well. If anybody gets chicken pox anymore, there's a vaccine out there that um, that is, has slowed or, or reducing the uh, cases of chicken pox. Number nine, car cleaner. Why pay a whole lot of money for a variety of different products to clean your car when all you need is a box of baking soda? You can use baking soda to clean the lights, windows, tires, floor mats, vinyl seats, and, with, and more without fear of leaving scratch marks. Simply mix a quarter of a cup of baking soda in a quarter of warm water and apply with a clean, soft rag or sponge. For really difficult stains, use a soft brush. Next time you're at the store and you pass the baking soda, think twice. It may be inexpensive and seemingly unworthy, but in reality, baking soda is a wise, environmentally friendly, and healthy thing to stack up on, stock up on. So people, baking soda, watch some of my other baking soda videos. I got a ton of stuff on baking soda. It is truly a miracle, especially for the price, people. I mean, it's just, it is insane to think a dollar can go so far. Now, we didn't talk about really the health benefits of baking soda. I have other videos on that. I mean, there's doctors using baking soda for cancer treatment, people that are doing it successfully, that are having major, major success with baking soda for cancer and all other types of things. Um, athletes are using it to uh, to, um, to help them detox, to help them recover, uh, to help them dump lactic acid out of their system. The Olympics allow it. Uh, they used to do it in horse racing, but you know, what happened was the horse trainers were pouring so much baking soda into the horse and it wasn't being regulated, so they had to stop that altogether. But there, there's a lot of uh, uh, research and there's a lot of people that swear by baking soda. Um, and especially marathon runners, baking soda does phenomenal for that. Uh, a little before, maybe a little a after the run. And all you need, go to some of my other videos, I'll try to link them here. Basically a teaspoon of water and a pint, a teaspoon of water, a teaspoon of baking soda and a pint of water. Mix it up, let it settle, and down it. I like to do it on an empty stomach. It's great for acid reflux, for di indigestion, uh, bad digestion. It's, just, it, it's an amazing, amazing thing. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass this on.